Not gonna lie, fifth grade math can be kind of challenging, especially when you're adding fractions with different denominators. But guess what? That's exactly what we're gonna break down in this episode of Math 345 Support. What's going on, everybody? My name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create a ton of video lessons for students in these grade levels, I thought it might be a good idea to start creating videos for teachers, tutors, parents, basically anybody looking to help a third, fourth, or fifth grader to make math make sense. So let's go ahead and break down adding fractions with different or unlike denominators. All right, so here we have five eighths plus one half. And sometimes what students might think to do, which is wrong, I'm gonna put wrong up here, don't do this. They think that they can just add across to get six tenths. And that's not what you do, okay? Let me explain why that's not what you do by using a visual. So if here is a visual representing what's going on here, we have two different fractional pieces, right? We have five eighths plus we have one half, right? So five eighths, there's five eighths plus one half looks like this, but the pieces are different sizes, so we can't just join them together. What we need to do is break them into the same size piece. And this one's kind of simple because what I could do is just take this one half, let me show it with a different marker, and look, one half could also be broken into eight, right? And I could get four eighths. One half is equal to four eighths. So now if I added those, I would have one, two, three, four, five eighths six, seven, eight, nine. I would have nine one-eighth pieces, so nine eighths. That's what's happening visually, okay? But here's the computation that's happening. So we have different denominators. We have eight and we have two. The very first thing that we need to do is find the LCD, the least common denominator. The denominator that's the smallest that they both have in common. So how do we do that? Well, we have eight, and we have two, and we're just gonna count by each until we arrive at the same number. So let me count by eight. Body rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24. I could keep going. Let me see if I can get a match though with the twos. Do you know I know my twos? Two, four, six, eight. And we have match eight and eight. So the lowest, the least, common denominator that they both have in common is eight. So now we're going to rewrite these two fractions. Should have left this over there. So now both of our fractions are going to have a denominator of eight because their LCD, their least common denominator, is going to be eight. So I just went from eight as a denominator to eight. I didn't change it, right? So because I didn't change it, eight times one equals eight. Same on the bottom, same on the top. Five times one equals five. Now, when I went from one half to something eighths, we can see here I went to four eighths, right? And that's because two times what gives us eight? Two times four, same on the bottom, same on the top. So one times four equals four, all right? Well, that worked out nicely. <laughs> And now, when you add or subtract, you can use addition in the numerator. Yeah, man. So five plus four equals nine pieces, but they both have the same denominator. The denominator slides across, slides across to equal nine eighths. So what we just did here is we represented visually what was happening with addition and then we use the computation side. Now these were kind of easier fractions to do and it does get a little more complicated, but it's important for students to understand what is happening, the concrete level, and then applying that to computation as well. Um, also, let's add one more thing before we go, and that would be that 9 eighths is the same as one whole and one eighth. How do I know that? Well, if we're over here, if I put move this here and move this here, and put this here. Now I have one whole with one eighth left over. Another way that you could do that is to take your numerator and put it inside. It's your, it's just like saying nine divided by eight. So if we read it like this, nine divided by eight 
eight goes into nine one time. We get a remainder of one. Let's turn it into a fraction. So we're gonna say start it from the bottom. Now we're here on top and our denominator was eight. One and one eighth. Okay, now this was a quick example, but guess what? I have a ton of video lessons on my website. So if you need some more help with this, you should definitely check that out. And guess what? They're geared towards students. So if you have students that you're working with, go ahead and grab a free trial and watch it with your students and see if it helps to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for your students. If you have another third, fourth or fifth grade skill that you know that you need help with and just need to understand, please let me know. You can do that by emailing me. My email is below. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. You can even comment here and let me know what do you need help with and I will try my best to either create a video or to point you in the right direction for some videos that can help you. Before we go, remember that you were created for a reason. That's right. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So go out there and change the world in your own special way and I will see you next time on Math 345 Support.